I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. What is up, everybody? It's Monday. Y'all had an amazing weekend. Some of you guys, even though we're in quarantine, I know y'all found love. We tried to find love for two people yesterday once again. Sucky was at it. My name is Mike Feeling. We're going to talk about how she did. But of course, I'm not by myself, thank goodness, for this show because I need help doing this. First <laughs> off, we got Regina. Hey, Mike, come on now. You're a hopeless romantic. You believe in all that good I stuff. I am hopeless romantic. My <laughs> wife's right here, home from work, nurse hey, practitioner, hey. Raquel. <laughs> but of course, we're also joined by Nate. What's up, Nate? I am a hopeless romantic, and at the same time, I don't have anyone near me, so I think I'm going to apply to be on Find Love Live. I think well, you should go summer. for it. Look, guys, so ready. guys, you've watched us through the past two episodes of the show. You know what we're going to do? We're going to talk about both of the daters and, and how their things go down. But first, I want to get, you know, right off the bat, the question that's on everybody's mind, the most important outcome of this entire show, basically. Nate, how's it going with Angel? Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Wait, I didn't talk to you guys about this. No. Uh, oh, no. Oh. This has that to be so more interesting than the actual show. So did you slide in? Like, did you go for it? No, 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 no. I went to Angel Sage. Like, I actually didn't look Angel up. Yeah. And I started looking. Mike, I am not for the Barbie doll type, too much makeup. Uh, okay. Uh, it's not okay. me. So when I really started seeing her, it was too much. She was on that show for the clout and the likes and the followers. Wow. So okay, all right. That's well, why she popped up so fast? Not for me, but Nate. There's three more ladies. Woman. Three more ladies from last night. Maybe they got a chance with Nate. Let's see. Let's go through it first up. Let's get an overall, guys. This is you know Regina's going to have some news for us later, but this is theoretically was the final episode of of the season. Overall, let's just give thoughts on the show overall, Regina. Last night's episode, but then overall the, the show and the concept. What do you think? Uh, overall, I would give the show a C plus. If I, okay. you know, I used to be a school teacher, so I'm going to grade, give them a little curve here. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, they've got so much work to do with cleaning things up, the content, how they ask questions, and not being rude to one another and mm. The guys, especially trash talking, yeah. it's horrible. Tra trash know? talking literally last night. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. something we've been critical of uh, this entire time. Nate, mm -hmm. what do you think? <laughs> Same thing. I mean, I think the trash talking is kind of fun, but again, it's kind of like when we were talking on Labor of Love, it's like, focus on her for a second, guys. Like, yeah, the banter here and there, but they focus too much on trying to trash talk. Now, they really got on my nerves. The guys, just like, I don't even want to even deal with it. And then the girls, I just feel like, they're just so sweet and camaraderie. Like, let's all just try to win this guy. If not, it's okay. But, yeah. Terrible yeah. episode. Last, last night seemed to be just the worst. The guys, I mean, we're going to talk about it right now, but the guys were terrible. Uh, <laughs> it just wasn't interesting at all. Uh, and, and it seems to me like this show has progressively gotten further and further away from actually trying to find a love connection. Mm -hmm. I know Trademark. I know that's an actual show. But if we're trying to find actual love connections for people who are going on or are, are writing it or calling it or whatever, I think they're getting away from that. And I don't honestly even know what the show is. We'll make more comments. Let's start it right off. We have Jesse. She's looking for love. We know she works in fashion uh, within a shoe designer. She seems very outgoing. She's beautiful, very outgoing. She seemed very spunky and like she had, ready to have a lot of fun. Nate, what'd you think of Jesse right off the bat? I actually like Jesse off the back, but again, too much makeup, too much dolled up for me personally. But she was right. a very beautiful woman. She had a lot of good energy. I felt like she knew what she was looking for in a man. You know, a lot of people just put out these surface level cliche things. So all in all, I did like Jesse at first. Yeah, I liked her a lot too. I like that she got super done up, honestly. I, you know, this is quarantine. She's ready to have a good time. Like she's going to go for it. Regina, did you like her right off the bat? I did. But I think, too, with Jesse, remember, um, she's a former beauty queen. Sure. So I think she was auditioning, too, for a hosting <laughs> job or something. Doesn't hurt. But, she might as well. Yeah. She might as well. Hey, I'm not mad at her. But I, like um, I thought that out of all three episodes, she was the one um, bachelorette that gave the best pitch for herself. I, I so mean, too. she ran her pitch down like she... 
did her homework. She practiced. Yeah, she and, seemed um, prepared. Yeah, she sold herself in a real nice, natural, interesting way. And so I could see why the guys thought she was kind of like shark bait, you know? <laughs> and honestly, I, mean, <laughs> I, I thought maybe of any of the women this whole season, she just seemed like the most fun to me, the most outgoing. Like she'd be the most fun to, to hang out with, especially over Zoom. We can't really do anything anyway, right? Yeah. It seemed like she'd be fun. So she's got three guys. Of course, we got Marcus, Ryan, and Rob. Right off the bat, let me hit you with my thoughts. Ryan, really no effort. I mean, I'm not trying to make fun of people on here. I try to stay positive. But dude is in a hoodie and looking beyond casual. And even if you don't care about finding love or whatever you are gonna be on national television i was like you're really not making kind of any effort here whatsoever and regina i was really excited that she called him out on it later in the episode what do you think of yeah that? she did but what happened in the end so <laughs> you know <laughs> i mean i thought it was tacky too here she is all glammed up beautiful i mean let's face the facts first impressions are lasting impressions sure. So if you really want to impress somebody, it's like going on a job interview, whether you're dating uh, it's for a date or not. This could yeah. be your future husband or wife. So yeah. put your best foot forward, guys. What did you think of Marcus and Rob? Uh, Marcus, at first, I liked him right away. I thought he was classy, but then he got real cocky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he got real cocky, and, yeah. and it hurt him. And, and Rob, end. who works in Just, garbage? Oh, evidently. my gosh. He was just, he trash talked from the beginning and he was just straight out too macho for me. The kind of guy to me that would be very domineering, you yeah. know, and he would be a bully in the relationship. So. I'm, I'm telling you, Rob thought he had a great joke coming on this show, Nate. You mm -hmm. have a, the garbage thing and I'm going to hit him with it. And it's just downhill from there. what do you think of her prospects here? Well, I understand the Ryan situation and he did come on tacky, but I kind of want to go against you guys for a second because I think that the producers are telling these guys not to get dressed up, like kind of be casual. And I, the other guy just had t-shirts on, you know, it just looked like he was a little more tackier because he had a hoodie on, but there's, it wasn't like they put on any special shirts or they did anything special for them. They probably literally turned the camera on just like he did. So the fact yeah. that she took him away because of that, it kind of irritated me because initially, in my notes right now, Marcus, I don't think that he looked tacky, but compared to the picture that he had up, and then when it showed him, it was like, oh. Like, it wasn't like he, he was catfish, but it was just like, his hair wasn't as <laughs> so close I mean, be. I His video wasn't clear, so. That, that. I'm mad about that. That seems, that seems like the way it is for all of them, to be fair, but. There is a big difference between wearing just like a nice solid t-shirt and like a frumpy hoodie and mm -hmm. what looks like a yeah. graphic t-shirt on it. There's, you could get into the club with a solid t-shirt. Ryan wasn't wrinkles. going to the club yeah. with that at all. Yeah, a guy that comes uh, on wrinkles. national TV looking like that on a dating show. I mean, let's I don't face it. it. Yeah. There are other women out there viewing sure. the show so you're you know I, I he mean, turned yeah. me off i'm well, not me, i'm guys, not saying it's great I would, I would put on a full suit if it was me up there mm. okay trust me believe. i just say i don't think that they were that much worse than he was so the fact that she deleted mm. him just because of that was that's why i was like hmm, it makes sense yeah but i, I agree to disagree i think he was worse than the other guys but <laughs> so you get into their questions here this is just where, to me, it just keeps getting more and more disappointing because there's a legit chance here to do some kind of love connection or, or dating thing. And just most of the questions and stuff they toss out are just completely meaningless. And they're barely fun, I think. I don't know. Uh, give them some Spanish, right? And then how would you bark if you were a dog? Uh, and then... <laughs> It just seems, and then what's something embarrassing in your apartment? Marcus had dishes that he needed to do. Ryan has candles and Rob has photo frames with the original pictures in them hanging around. That's a little sad. I felt bad <laughs> for him with that. I was like, you don't have to decorate for yourself with random people. But again, like none of these questions to me mean anything. No, It could be at least, 
you know, what would you, where would you take me on a first date? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, would exactly. it, what would be your favorite vacation you've ever been, or like yeah. get to know them somehow. Uh, we know Ryan ends up getting booted because of this hoodie. Uh, and I, I wrote in my notes, uh, an expletive, duh. <laughs> I was like, yeah, uh, it's obvious because I don't know that he actually answered any questions except for fighting with <laughs> Rob back and forth over who was more trash. So, I mean, I don't know, Nate, all these answers and stuff. What do you think of all this is going on? The answers are, are, are dumb, but again, I've lowered my standards for the show. So Fair enough. I just I thought that they were fun, you know, even when we get into the second part. But all in all, yes, they're terrible questions. I thought Ryan, even though I've been defending Ryan, I did think he was going to be the first one to be released, <laughs> and I did think that he didn't answer any questions. And not that he didn't take it serious, not because of his clothes. I just thought that his demeanor, like he just yeah. didn't take it serious. And I was so irritated by the way that he exited the show. It's like, who are you, dude? Like, yeah, that was like, tacky. The yeah. definition of a, a real sore loser. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Regina, he goes out basically saying, I hate all of you. I hope, I hope <laughs> none of you are successful or something like that. Like what? Yeah. I mean, when he opened his mouth up and she asked him about his outfit, I mean, his uh, answer to me, spoke of somebody that's just at home, bored with quarantine, and want to come on the show and just be a jerk. I mean, I guess I'm there right now, too. This is an old work <laughs> graphic t-shirt, but I'm not on TLC, to be fair. Uh, yeah, I don't know. And then, of course, we had to get, you know, uh, our curveball for the episode, even though we don't do it for the second group. It's just it's so silly. So Otis is back. I don't remember this. Do you guys remember Otis being there last week? Did they accidentally flash to his picture or something? No. I, I missed remember. it, but that's what Sufi said. I don't know. He comes in. Um, this was hilarious. This, to me, was the funniest part of the show. When Otis comes on, and they start talking about Otis and who are you and, and should we swap, did you guys notice, I think Ryan's mic was still on? Mm -hmm. So Ryan was, like, still trash-talking them, even mm -hmm. though his, his picture was gone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought that was funny just from a production standpoint. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, I this is so... It happened a little bit, too, when she let Marcus go. Like, Marcus is yeah. still talking. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know right. what? <laughs> what was funny, too, is the guy, um, Rob, told Marcus, man, you should have kept your shirt on. Yeah, <laughs> you know, absolutely. He should. On. Absolutely and should, Marcus. nowhere. <laughs> Otis, uh, Otis is a bodybuilder, whatever, trainer. Uh, he goes, he's bi-coastal. And I guess Marcus, to try to combat that, took his shirt off. Ah, bad move because Marcus yeah. gets eliminated and we swap in Otis. And then it's Otis versus Rob. And then we get into what Regina was talking about beforehand, uh, especially before we started the show. J show us your feet. Ha. Ugh. That was really cringy. Rate yourself from one to 10 and then get a final pitch. For their final pitch, Nate, Rob said, don't you want your life to be better? Ooh. And then Otis said, we could go out and enjoy ourselves, go to the beach, uh, go in New York and be active. And I thought, well, Otis is going to win because he's the yeah. only one that gave a halfway legitimate answer this entire time. And exactly. plus you can get some free personal training. Sure. Yeah, and I, I, right when Otis came onto the show with his smile and he said he was 6'9", over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's 6'9", and he has that smile. And then plus, he actually came off very, very respectful, in my opinion. Yeah, um, yeah. He, he had a he good did. balance of mm -hmm. showing, not cocky, his confidence, showing his mm -hmm. confidence, but also being very respectful. I don't need mm -hmm. to bash this other guy. I don't need to tell you how your life is going to be perfect. I'm just going to present myself, present what I'm going to offer, and you choose. So He was I'll himself. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was himself. Maybe, you know, as we, as we wind this season down now, <laughs> yesterday, I mean, what they need to do is they actually really need to screen the contestants more. They've obviously screened the main people who are choosing, right? But if they screen the contestants more, maybe we'd eliminate Ryan. Right? He wouldn't even make it to the show, and then we wouldn't have yeah. these silly answers and, and all this stuff. Anyway, well, go ahead, Regina. Yeah. I was going to say, when you go on live, you know, they're like short on time. Yeah. And yeah, they should people screen calling it. in. Yeah, you know? they should screen it and uh, not be so live, maybe. Yeah, yeah, like have them before, have the three before, you know, just, just cast them out and hire them. Or <laughs> have it like that, and then, like, you know how they have Otis come in? Yeah. Maybe that person be a random live person who's literally watching at home. Who maybe, yeah, it. okay, yeah. So that's a good one. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's a great idea. That's I like idea. that. Yeah. Either way, me. Otis wins. You're watching. What's that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> or Be either trying. you're going to be on Be the trying. show, everybody out there listening. 
we can That's nominate right. Nate to be on the show <laughs> next season. <laughs> That'd be amazing. So Otis wins. Otis and Jesse uh, will have some kind of virtual date. We get a random update on uh, 90 Day Fiance Jesse and his virtual date with Heya and their weird sushi thing. I don't know. Anything you guys want to say about that? I was just like, okay, like I, they hung out. They Boring. hung out, I guess. Boring. Yeah. I, he's I, trying I, to I feed love, her sushi. It. Go ahead, Regina. I'm sorry. He's trying to feed her sushi on the video screen. <laughs> at first, to me, I felt like that was rude. He could at least say to her, hey, listen, uh, I'm going to have a meal. Why don't you bring a meal on and we can both kind of portray like we're having a romantic dinner. First yeah. dinner. Yeah. Now, when they got into this, I'll tell you what I thought. And then someone out there in virtual land can steal my idea here because this would have been really pimp. I thought a delivery person was going to show up at her spot with sushi. Like that he called great. them and ordered you it do? and they do that. And I was like, oh, it'd be amazing. But then know that he like ate sushi first and then shoved it to the camera. Said, oh, that was okay. tacky. This is a complete yeah. waste, Nate. Bro, that, I was thinking that. the same thing. I was like, I was like, bro, this guy's about to get a lot of brownie points if he really ordered her food and they're having yeah. dinner over yeah. I'm like, I've been trying to do that for so long, but no one wants to go on a date with me and I'm not wasting my money. <laughs> now but, that yeah. would have been romantic. Romantic. But I, I did want to say I was Haley, Hayle, how do you pronounce her name again? I'm sorry. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. I'm sorry. Hey, I'm sorry. I love Nate's got no people. chance with Hey, yeah, by the way. It was his last week. He hasn't got the name right once. Go ahead. Oh, I messed it up last week. <laughs> hey, yeah. No, I, I loved how she played along, because clearly she thought it was weird, too. Hey, yeah. Like, what is this guy doing? But she played along with it. So I respect girls who don't bash guys who are trying to be. He's trying, though. At least he tried. But he could have sent her food. Something. Get better, yeah. bro. He could have sent her food. Anyway. We probably have very little hope for them. Whatever. Good luck to them. I got, I got more hope for Haya. I don't know. Jesse, I feel like he's going to be back on 90 days. Well, Jesse, next season. Eh, I don't really see what the big hoopla is about Jesse, yeah, <laughs> personally speaking. He needs that visa. He made no, no qualms about tossing out that he still <laughs> needs a, a K-1 visa. So uh, good luck to you, bro. Next, we got Vero, uh, our man here. This was... Man, I don't know. They need, I, I feel like they need to prep these people more because they're just not ready. There's no other way to say it. Vero comes on and Suki says, all right, you got 30 seconds. Like, give it to us. And he was like, whoa, 30 seconds. I mean, I need a half hour. Actually, it's really difficult for me to talk about myself. And then I was like, well, then you don't need a half an hour, bro. Like, if you don't like to talk about yourself, you don't need the half hour at all. This is this is really weird to And me. at that time, you were like 15 seconds into his field. Like, you just wasted your time. Yeah, dude. yeah, yeah, exactly. I thought that was so weird. Uh, he said he's very selfish, but he likes making people he cares about happy, which is always a good thing. And then, Regina, to me, the cringiest thing about this one was he constantly referred to everybody as baby mamas and wanting a baby mama so bad. That is yeah. a little oh. bit forward, No. Tacky. Mm. How do you know? Hey, we're talking about a first date here online. Maybe. We're not talking yeah. about, <laughs> you know, we're taking it to the next level and I'm, you know, having your baby. No, I'm not feeling you like that. And you shouldn't even be feeling me like that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you, you know, if he's that desperate, there are plenty of women out here. He can buy a baby and have a surrogate. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if he was trying to be cute or he thought it was funny, but the fact that he double, triple, quadruple down on it, it was, I mean, even Suki had to say something about it. Nate, did this snag you right off the bat? I, I loved it. And I loved it because yeah. I thought he was completely joking. And I do yeah. the same exact thing. I don't know if you're serious or not, but I do the same exact thing. I always talk to women about children because I want a child, not this second. And no, of course not when we start dating, but I joke like that. Like, I can't wait till I meet my baby mama. I'm never gonna have a baby mama because if I have a child with a woman, I'm gonna get married and we aren't getting a divorce. We're gonna die hating each other before that. <laughs> but I thought it was cute. Like, I don't know. I thought it was funny. I thought he was joking completely. Okay. And like eh. his, his demeanor throughout the show, I thought he was just a funny joking guy and he just didn't take the show seriously. So yeah. that's kind of what I got out of it. But I don't know, maybe he's a weirdo. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, for baby mama. that's fair. I mean, he definitely was really joking the entire episode. I just think the baby mama stuff, if it was, like you said, for me personally, it wasn't landing at all. Like the sarcasm oh, no. wasn't in his voice. 
it just right. it was it just came off really cringy and i think creepy to the girls mm-hmm. who are just seeing you on zoom yeah also i i want to add this because this is me too like i work a uh, really really hard right now but i do it to prepare myself for my wife and my future children and so that could be something that he may be thinking about you know like let me set this up for my wife and my future children i don't want to wait until i find her and, and start having children to you know set that up so when he made the comment where he said he's very very selfish about making people he cares about happy I don't know. Like, maybe, like, he's not very... He wasn't serious with these women, like, let's have a baby right after the show. But that's probably what he's looking for. Like, I don't have time to play around. I don't have time to date and spend my money. It's about finding my wife and taking care of my kids in the future. I really don't care. Yeah. Well, I, get, no, I, got to, I get what Nate's saying. And the, the selfishness stuff really didn't bother me. But to me, the baby mama joke thing is probably yeah. like a date yeah, two a if things mama. are going really yeah. good and you get like a little inside joke going or something. It's not like, mm-hmm. hey, nice to meet you. I'm Mike. Are you going to be my baby mama? Let's see. I'll ask you some random questions and ask you to make out with a Coke can and see like where things go. Well, <laughs> I think he kind of, uh, <laughs> it kind of backfired to, uh, to a degree to me. I think so. I mean, when he's presented <laughs> with these three ladies, Beautiful, lovely ladies, as always, Jeffrey, Valley, and Kathleen. Uh, Kathleen, unfortunately, had, like, no sound for a bunch of her segment, oh, which is so really not cool. But it seemed yeah. like he heard her, so that's all that matters. Valley is an old lady at heart, right? And I was like, that's not the right answer, I feel like, for this show. And then Jeffrey has two kids already and is obsessed with heavy metal. Uh, none of them would kiss except for Kathleen. Kissed her Coke can, like we said. Man, uh, I don't know. I, I, I just didn't feel like any of them were really into it right off the bat. What'd you think, Regina? Well, didn't Christine, she asked some crazy question about farting, right? That's the second, that's the second level. That's after we eliminate that's Jeffrey. That's so tacky. Okay. You want to yeah. wait on that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess, I mean, uh, Nate, do you have anything to say about the first round? It just didn't seem like anybody was taking it super serious. Not that you have to, this isn't, you know, a life and death kind of show, but a little bit more, I don't know. It just, it didn't seem like anything has been happening to make anybody actually able to have a love connection. Yeah, I, I, for one, just I'm laughing at your notes and the way that you write, you're reading your notes off because I know that you're watching the show writing them like that. <laughs> so Jeffrey, I felt the same way. Heavy metal, I don't care about the two kids, but I just felt like she was a Barbie, like literally a Barbie. And didn't she leave the show negatively as well? Yeah, she yeah. pretty much told him that. Oh, hey, oh yeah, bro, I'm too good for you. you. Yeah, I'm too good for you. You can't handle me. She said that first yeah. thing uh, right out of the, uh. the gate. She should she just go that. call Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. You guys be perfect together. But yeah, so her, I was like, she got to go right now. Like, why <laughs> would she pop up on the show? Even though she was the first one, I was like, yeah, she got to go. Valley, she was very boring. That was like, she was like, this girl's boring. It's like, ugh. And yeah. then Kathleen, I told y'all about my Asians. That was like, that's my girl. Yeah, Kathleen seemed really cool. She has a, she has a gamer chair as a nerdy gamer. If anybody knows Curse, it's an old company. I work for a gaming company. I knew that was a DX racer right off the bat. I was like, oh, you play video games. You probably stream on Twitch. Okay, seemed pretty cool. Yeah, Valley seemed a little bit boring. Also, Valley with the shade. Did anybody else notice this? When Jeffrey said she had two kids, Valley was like, oh, no, I'm pure. I have no children. I was like, oh, that's not. Okay. That's not at the same level. (laughs) What are you, that's, wow. I was like, that's really shady. Uh, I didn't like that. Of course, Jeffrey goes, we're down to the last two. For whatever reason, Viral does not get a surprise third lady. He's, he's left with just Valley and Kathleen. He asked the most least attractive thing about himself. Valley gave some weird answer about people having goals. I don't know. Kathleen yeah. said he seemed nerdy, but she's nerdy too. He asked, this is the second episode, I think, in a row where we've had something with farting or bowel movements or something yeah, like that. I don't know why this is such a first date thing. Uh, but right. the girls handled it, and Valley says she doesn't have exes, and Kathleen said her ex would say she's the worst person ever. And oh. then we find the, the Twitter <laughs> poll that 100% people want Kathleen. I don't know. Again, none of these answers really seem to do anything for me. Uh, Kathleen, Regina just seemed more fun. Well, until she two. said that she's the worst date ever, and the other thing she said, she refer to herself as an airhead. Yeah, that's true. And I'm like, what 
girl in her right mind is going to call herself an airhead in front of any guy. But she did qualify it, right? She said, people say that, but I'm very career oriented. I don't know if we're just going mm-hmm. for, for a one date, probably Nate, Kathleen's got to sound more interesting and fun to just <clears throat> hang out with than Val. <laughs> Oh, definitely, definitely. And I think that Kathleen started off by saying that she's not very sarcastic. Am I correct, or did she say she was? Yeah. Yes, she not. did, but she's super sarcastic the whole she's time. She's super sarcastic yeah. the whole time. So but, I'm but like, saying I'm not dope. sarcastic was sarcasm. Yeah, like, <laughs> maybe it was. Yeah, maybe it was that <laughs> trickeroo. So that's what I know. Is like that she's, been, she's had fun. She enjoyed herself. And what did my girl Valley say? My girl Valley, she made the comment about, like, because again, and this is why it, it made me think about it, because she was like, I, I love that you want kids, but it's important for you to have goals for yourself and your partner mm-hmm. first, and everything else will follow. And people tell mm-hmm. me that all the time, like, Nate, stop worrying about all that. It will just come. Stop stressing it out. So, sure. Valley, I understand. but I just thought that was a weird answer to what do you think is the worst thing about me? Yeah. She was trying, well, well, I think that she was trying to say that yeah. kind of what you guys were saying is you're weird for bringing up this baby stuff right now. Right. You know, or that, I think that was her getting that out without saying you're weird for Got it. Here talking about your baby. And I give her uh, a lot of credit for that because obviously she didn't feel comfortable with him constantly saying that. And she made the comment um, about the money. <laughs> you got the money for the baby. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, either way, uh, we uh, got to wonder if the producer stepped in because 100% going for one person doesn't seem very fair or fun. Yeah. Either way, Maybe as suspected, Vera was like, nah, I don't go with the crowd. I'm, ch- I'm choosing Valley. Great, I guess. Okay. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't even know how to end it. It just ends. That's it. Or, or, or was it really only probably three people voting? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, there was two people and then a third person popped up. I don't know. He's got his choice. Guys, that's basically the end of the episode. They don't do any like real coming attractions or anything. It's the end of the episode. It's the end of the season. The first three, they gave it a shot. Um, Regina's got some news. But before that, given overall, Nate, now that we've come to the very end of this, what do you think of the show? Does it have legs? Should they keep going? What do you? What, what's your opinion in general? Um, I think that they should keep trying. I think that the idea is very, very good. Again, we're in a society that everyone wants to be involved. So, like, as you're watching The Bachelor, if there was a way that you could be yeah. involved in The Bachelor, that would be yeah. so dope, you know, with yeah. all these things going on. So the idea is great. They should keep trying. Yes, they have to get better at it, but um, maybe some more interesting people, screen them more, like you were saying. But I like the idea, you know, yeah. because this is what we are, even quarantine or not, like, this is what we do. We're on our phones, we're FaceTiming, and we're connected to what's going on right now. Yeah. So I like it, but... I don't know. I agree. I like the concept. I think they need to give it a shot being a little bit more serious and just doing one person and their three or four choices for the whole hour and hour. see how that plays out. So not everything isn't so rushed. You can get a little bit deeper answers and maybe someone can actually find a legit connection or have at least a better chance to. Regina, what do you think overall the, of the season? And then give us your fun news. <laughs> well, what I thought is that basically, uh, remember, they only did this uh, format because they had to scramble because sure. of COVID-19. So actually, the show was to be exactly pretty much like 90 Day Fiance. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, moving ahead with the who knows uh, whether or not they'll keep this format or they'll uh, go back to their original idea. And if they do, then, of course, it's going to be a lot more uh, cleaner content, more organized. And, you know, I think you'll just it'll be a better quality show. And as far as the news goes with the show, this show was uh, pretty good with ratings because, of course, everybody's home now. So what else do you have to do? (laughs) Right. But You'll get a show that that's maybe a, a no brainer for some. And for younger people, hey, hey, let me see if I can score one. So uh, they are being renewed, and the show is coming back late summer. Nate's got a chance. Nate, you got a chance? (laughs) You you guys have no idea how many people have lobbied me to be on a dating show. I went to a a work work training in New York like three years ago, and literally – 
four different people were like, you have to go on The Bachelor. Everyone was way older than me. You have to go on The Bachelor. No. Uh, Why? I just, I am like more of the traditional guy. I'm not finding my woman in the club. I'm not finding my woman on Instagram. She's not going to be on the reality TV show. I want love. 1980 where love. Where are you going to find her, Nate, at church or where? Where's your yeah. ideal place to find your That's what I said. I, that's what I said. I, I mean, look, I'm going to go work. And so God brings her to me. I don't know where she's going to be. At. I have no idea. But I'm the not best way is to get introduced by friends. A thousand percent. That's well, just Mike, the best way. Regina, y'all know I'm looking. <laughs> well, you were all ready to put it out there. So who knows what's, uh, so what's going to happen? We know Nate is looking. Regina, we've lost your video. There you're back. back. There you're back. Sorry. Guys, <laughs> that's going to do it. I guess until next season, we're, we'll see what kind of changes they make. We see what the showrunners do. And I'm sure they're going to take all three of these episodes and dissect them. And, of course, watch our show. And then uh, rejigger everything. And we're going to come back with something new. But until then, so this is our last episode here. And, of course, this is actually for last week we were off for memorial day but regina tell everybody where they can follow you hey and guys. what other shows you're doing on after buzz uh other shows i'm doing married to medicine la and we're going to be on tonight there you at go seven awesome. live it's going to be an exciting show you can find me at instagram regina e coles or twitter regina rico r-e-c-o thank you so much for watching and you'll be back here at 7 p.m. PST Pacific because we're at yes. LA time. Yes. Nate, we know not to forget the underscore, but where are they going to follow you at? And uh, what other shows are you doing? At Royal Nate underscore. This, yeah, don't forget the underscore. Um, tonight, I am on Below the Deck doing the reunion. Tomorrow, we are starting a brand new season of Below the Deck at 5 p.m. every single Tuesday. And then on Fridays, we're on Labor of Love. So I am everywhere, but follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, and I will show you so much love with Afterbirth, and I love you guys. Is uh, is Below Deck still have the same captain? Is it still the same guy? It's always switching. It always mm. switches. So like the one I'm on now is Below the Deck Sailing Yacht. The mm. one that's starting back tomorrow is, is Below the Deck Mediterranean. Mm. So they mm. change cast men. Sometimes they come back, sometimes, you know, but they always change it up. Cool. Well, everybody tune in. Guys, my name is Mike Thieling. What shows am I doing right now? Married at First Sight, <laughs> Couples Camp Quarantine, Married at First Sight, Australia. I do Labor of Love with Nate. We have a ton of fun on that show. Come watch us. That show is really, really fun. You can follow me everywhere at Mike Thielen. You know After Buzz has got you guys covered throughout this quarantine and beyond with all the favorite shows you guys love to watch. We love doing after shows for them. So if you're watching us on YouTube, give me a big subscribe and thumbs up. If you're listening to us on iTunes or any of the podcasting services, five-star reviews for us. We really appreciate it. We love bringing you guys this content. You make After Buzz the ESPN of TV talk. And until next season, I hope you guys find love live. Hit Nate up. Give him a date. See you soon. <laughs> Bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to After Buzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.